Helldivers 2 is a PvE shooter, and for once it doesn't pretend it's got some higher aims. No, we're not gonna tell a deep plot and reinvent the Joker, but this time he has anxiety. Get in there, shoot enemies. Did you think the best part of Mortal Kombat was inputting the fatality? Awesome, you're enlisted now. Now wait in this queue for a game about democracy while we struggle with the weight of democracy. The broader setup is that the game is a simulation of a war over the galaxy. One end has the Terminids, a mindless bug race that spits acid, and the other end has the fascist automatons that use heavy firepower. So I'm sure that one day this entire map will be filled to show that it forms the political compass. We're all in a giant team against them. There's a large map with individual planets. The more missions we succeed on those planets, the more liberated they become. If we lose, they slowly make their way towards Super Earth. And if they conquer Super Earth, it'll be the worst transaction anyone has ever made. We'll drop you into the planet and make you fight for your fucking life. There's an objective that needs to be completed. Sometimes it's simple, sometimes it's not, but there will be constant pressure. Explosions will kill you left and right. And no matter how much you cut down their numbers, it keeps happening because it turns out those explosions are coming from your own damn team. However, if you somehow make it out, you might be able to buy a giant localized explosion all your own. How do you play Helldivers? You shoot them. You have a gun. They have a weak spot somewhere on their body. Yours is all over. Good luck. Half the enemies will one-shot you, but it's okay. Your teammates are one memorized sequence away from summoning you back. I admit the game controls very well. There's only a handful of basic commands, but there's something crispy about it, like a double fried wing. I hit that jump button and watch my character Max Payne dive off a large rock, firing bullets before shattering every bone in their body, and then I medicate. Here, you want democracy? I'll record these next lines while opening a cold beer. The first faction, the automatons, are third-person shooter enemies, uncharted bad guys with rocket launchers. They will fire shots at you from afar, giving you time to throw tactical abilities at them from a safe distance, which made me instantly realize that this is the phantom pain without the score deduction. Many automatons have strong armored shells that block damage from the front. You often need to toss a grenade to get around their large shield or land precise headshots. They also deploy themselves in drop ships that make it easier to get surrounded, giving you that loving feeling of being in a fox hole. Frankly, that's putting it nicely. It feels like random rockets are raining from the sky, and finally, the game has fire that's not friendly. The other faction, the Terminids, are a bug-like species that will swarm you with strong melee attacks. To fight the bugs, you have to be a lot more mobile, constantly holding the movement key and trying to manage your distance from them, making it a lot harder to get your shit together if things go south while fighting them. The moment they're actually on top of you is usually the moment it's too late. Using the dive to make one valiant jump away from them is just going to result on them killing you on the floor instead. They will continuously spawn from little hovels in the ground that you disable with grenades. If you don't, it will create more enemies than you want to deal with. An important part of each match is managing your resources. Reloading actively dumps the entire clip. If you have leftover shots, you leave them on the ground, meaning you have to make a trade-off between having a full magazine and making the most of the one you've got. Supplies can be called down every three minutes. That applies to everybody. If you keep firing and reloading, you'll have to sit in the forest doing nothing but waiting for another ability to become ready. What separates Helldivers from a regular pew 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 game is that you have a giant fucking spaceship above you that for some reason can't do all of this on its own. When you queue into a lobby, you can select four stratagems, alongside a few that come with the mission type. These are high-impact abilities that go on a cooldown, allowing you to shape the fight a handful of times, the shape usually being a crater. You do this by inputting a code because the Helldivers couldn't order sesame chicken without pressing up, up, down, left, down, up, right. The stratagems have a wide variety of effects. One could call down a regular explosion, another could lay down a special heavy weapon, or you could lay a giant field of mines that will ruin your friendships later. There are several types of stratagem in relation to where on the ship that stratagem comes from. If you go to the Patriotic Administration Center, you'll gain access to new heavy weapons like a laser cannon, flamethrower, heavy LMG. Oh, fuck, that's an anti-tank rifle. Oh, fuck, that's an anti-tank rifle! Then you have the orbital cannons that get right to the point. This one explodes when you tell it to. This one really explodes when you tell it to. And this one is a rail cannon that explodes specifically the worst guy it sees. The hangar works differently in that its stratagems have ammo. These call for an eagle that will make strafing runs. You can deploy them within a short cooldown, but need to tell the ship to occasionally rearm itself, which will result in a much longer cooldown. Effectively meaning you can use these several times in the same fight, and then find the right dip in the action to send them for a reload. The bridge is the inverse of the orbital cannons, meaning they don't get to the point. 
It shoots giant explosions where you want, but they're all hipster explosions. Do you want to put a hole in that building? I don't know, how about you just fill it up with smoke instead because you want to add a step for some reason. The engineer's bay gives you deployable gear like a floating drone that creates a loving relationship. There are also those deployable mines, and I told you what those can do about relationships. These can come in very handy when you notice an obvious flank spot that will ruin the entire match. Only for you to accidentally get Kung Pao Chicken because you input up, up, down, left, down, up, up. And lastly, there's the Robotics Workshop that gives you turrets to summon for when you want to kill your teammates with plausible deniability. See, those are all the categories of weapons. Then you actually build a loadout and it says Offensive, Supply, and Defensive because that was a total waste of goddamn time. What you should bring depends on the kind of mission, but generally, I think you should always bring a supply item, because the weapons they offer cannot be taken in the equipment screen, usually having their own slot. You can carry your basic weapon, a sidearm, a heavy weapon, and a backpack. Heavy weapons also feel like they pack the most punch, and they seem to carry enough ammo to be used just as liberally, while backpacks give you just really strong upgrades. These are all ones that you should call down right at the start of the match. On the flip side, mines and turrets are best used when you're trying to extract, but can be used offensively if you really set your mind to it. And airstrikes are fine as long as under no circumstance are your teammates there. If you want those, you must level up, spending more hours than you could dream playing the damn game. The same way you have done with Rainbow Six Siege and Dead by Daylight and Destiny 2 and Overwatch 2 and get to pushing. You acquire new gear through the game's battle pass. Each mission gives you medals that you can spend to progress. Then you have the Bourgeois Battle Pass that has all the same weapons except the bullets are incendiary. It's okay. While they struggle with the weight of democracy, we can use it to our advantage. If you call down a weapon or get splattered against the rocks, anyone is free to take it. That's how I got this flamethrower. <laughs> When you come back from a mission, you get points and can spend them on new stratagems. They're pretty heavy investments, but there's something kind of nice about being the bigger bomb that guy in Oppenheimer was talking about. The biggest weight you must bear are the samples. These are collectible items you can get through by doing side objectives, and these can be spent on permanent stat upgrades. You can sleepwalk through the battle pass and stratagem store just fine, but if you don't seek out these samples, you will find everyone's death ship is stronger than yours. And once you start seeking these out, your Helldiver's lobby is going to get a lot less casual, as your random split between the main objective and the side objective. Multiple samples are hidden around the level. By grabbing them, you can gain permanent stat boosts for your character, like reducing the cooldown on your airstrikes. Samples also become your reason to keep fighting. If you die, you have to get them off the ground to keep them. If you don't count your blessings, I'm going to get impatient and call the extraction down before you're ready, and I'm already too far across the map for you to stop me. Some quests are profoundly simple. They drop you in, give you a few waves to kill. Some involve you trucking halfway across the map and performing Among Us tasks. My favorite involves killing giant boss monsters, and normally, I wouldn't tell you how to do the objectives. The game puts this box in the top right. You have a giant marker on your map for those objectives. Cool, if you look at that, you are of more use than 90% of the player base. And this isn't complaining about the people who are badgering the sample collection. I simply disrespect their plans. I noticed there were staggering amounts of games where the chaos was so intense that everyone forgot there was an objective in the first place, entering some kind of futile death spiral where we all shoot at hordes of enemies that aren't getting us anywhere. You also have to work with these people. Each supply drop contains four ammo and healing packs, which makes it seem easy, right? You have a party of four, but sometimes you might be a bit lower on resources than that one little box can offer. The only solution is to maybe just tell a little lie. Another one will come down. They'll be fine. The school hands out these cheese sandwiches for those in need. Anyway, speaking of having bad manners, one of Helldiver's biggest goals is to have a low amount of toxicity. It's one of the reasons they won't add a player versus player mode. I can't force you to do anything, but I can recommend you something very sternly. Do not play with Helldiver randoms. If you need to grind, wait until your friends get off work. This is a console audience. I'm so used to games where each player has a strict etiquette to follow, where everyone is terrified that they're secretly in a streamer's lobby, and if they shoot you once, their life is over. The randoms here are feral animals. They are here to shoot robots, and you need to subliminally herd them towards the objective by respawning them on top of it. 
That's guaranteed to change as people play, but I don't want to be the one to tame them. If you need the Helldiver randoms to level up, whatever layer of unemployment you're at is too deep. Each match has a time limit. If it runs out, your ship will just leave you, and now you have to pick up your order in person. Remember that stratagem on the ship that lets you respawn? Well, the game is over if there is no one to respawn anymore. You will eventually regain these over a minute and a half cooldown, but only once you've completely run out. Though, maybe, if you're lucky, that'll be enough to tide you over and get you through the extract. And, well, that's Helldivers 2. It is amazingly fun and chaotic in a way that, uh, I don't think we've gotten in a very long time. Oh, sorry, wait, I was supposed to be a dick. Hold on, let me rewind it. That's Helldivers 2. No, there is no more guide. The best gun in the game is currently the Breaker, and the 500 kilogram bomb will wipe out any problem you have. Plus, the shield backpack is a lifesaver. You can use that or not. I don't want to be the one to introduce smallpox upon these lands. This game is cool, and I'm not gonna ruin that. I say Helldivers 2 has no larger aims, but through its irreverent tone, it wraps around to being really smart. There's something quite entertaining about the unity of a fictional war. Lord knows I've heard enough about the loss of Malevian Creek. Let's hope that doesn't become unity against Joel. By most standards, Helldivers 2 is quite unremarkable from a gameplay standpoint. The guns felt about the same as every other game I played. Then, I had to come to accept something that I hate. The public opinion. We have yearned for Left for Dead for a while, but all we got was Back for Blood. In fact, people said, wow, this frame for a third-person co-op shooter is great. You should let us use that frame to shoot each other sometimes. Helldivers 2 then looked at Overwatch 2, Rainbow Six, Dead by Daylight, and they went, yes, come here. Helldivers then said they weren't interested. No Sam I am, not with a cat or on DVD. No Sam I am, I will not have PvP. The public slammed their fists and demanded it, but credit to Arrowhead Games, they said no. We don't want to let you be mad at each other. If you don't like it, your say does not matter here. The lesson is, the only way to save democracy is with a little fascism. Also, uh, this is a new mic. I was using it on the Lethal Company video, so uh, uh, give me some feedback and tell me if it sounds all right. Now that the queues have freed up, I imagine not a lot of you have time to really hang around some guy's credits. So, uh, so let's quickly thank the people on Patreon who made this video possible. I would especially like to thank Gremlin Broke My Video Game, Ethan A, CLX7R, Castle Maniac, Cold and I won, Colorado Ranger, Angel Martinez, Jonah Simpson, Anthony R. Chambers. Mario Fan 997, Tracy Leroy, Sparkbolt 120, Wreck Ren, Sturmfetter, and Pyrozine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.